Today was a big day. R. Kelly got sentenced to 30 years in the slammer for sex crimes and human trafficking. I first heard the breaking news during stream while watching Moist Esports compete in a London Major Rocket League tournament, and I gotta tell you, I was blown away. Here was my initial reaction to that information. R. Kelly so just got 30 years. It's possible to show <laughs> Victory scream! <laughs> Huh? I think most people know R. Kelly for the time that he pissed on an underage girl. Most people just kind of remember him as the super soaker sprinkler tinkler who just urinated on a fan who was underage. That's mainly his legacy, but some people do also remember him for his music, but outside of his music he has a long history of doing awful, awful shit that he's finally going to prison for. I'm honestly surprised his bribery attempt didn't work. I remember he made a very public statement saying that if he's found innocent, he'll release more Trapped in the Closet chapters. And I really thought that would do it. I figured that would clear his name, the judge would just throw out the case on the spot because he'd be hungry for more Trapped in the Closet lore in the extended universe. Uh, but I was surprised to, to see that the judge held strong. He didn't waver, even with such bribes on the table, something that... No human being can really resist. More trapped in the closet, are you kidding me? So hats off to the judge for not giving in to temptation and sin. For those that don't know, R. Kelly is the mastermind behind the Trapped in the Closet epic, which is a 33 chapter long song, each chapter being its own self-contained song. And it is one of the finest pieces of art our species has ever concocted. I, I can't even find the right words to describe it. It's just on a whole nother level. Like this is why we were put on this goddamn space rock. So that way we could listen to Trapped in the Closet eventually. All roads of evolution led to us listening to Trapped in the Closet. It is so unbelievably goofy. I'll give you a brief synopsis, but I won't be able to do it justice. So the song was created by R. Kelly, who must have been dangerously close to a ketamine overdose when he came up with the lyrics. It's just kind of like the first things that popped into his head when he made this, but it's all about cheating. And then the crazy series of events that happens as a result, just like a cascade of lunacy. So it's, it's like an opera where they sing back and forth and it starts with a man cheating on his wife. And it's set to one of the wackiest beats ever. It's like something you'd find on Fiverr by accident. It sounds like an alien abduction. So there's like a water phone going off like... With some kind of really basic like hit and snare behind it that's just... and a leaky faucet on top of that that'll just hit you with one of these. And then in comes the lyrics, which are absolute genius. It starts off kind of tame, you know, things like, I'm cheating on my wife and I know that she'll be mad, but God damn it, just had to bust a nut so bad. And then it like really starts ramping up like, I hear her husband, he's climbing up the stairs. I uh, hear a chainsaw revving, I said, damn it, that's not fair. So I pull my Beretta out and I put it to his wife's face and I said, put that chainsaw down or I blow this bitch's blood all over this place. So then he puts the chainsaw on the floor and I said, good, now we can talk like adults. And he said, no. I said, you sure? He said, yes. And I said, why? He said, no. Like he gets into an argument with himself in his song. Like those are bars that he'd spit back and forth. Like, no, he said, yes. I said, yes. He said, no. It's fucking amazing. And then it just like, re he always ends every chapter on a twist, so it'll be like, it turns out that's not his wife, it's my wife, and I would never abuse her, and there's a knock at the door, and it's me from the future, future, future. And then it's like, <laughs> going into chapter two, it's amazing, it's fucking amazing. Also, I stole that last line from Andrew. We used to spit trapped in the closet style lyrics back and forth at each other. And he came up with like a beautiful cliffhanger for R. Kelly trapped in the closet with like the uh, time travel line. It's just, it's just so unreal. Like I still can't believe that it actually exists. I still, I listen to like the first 12 chapters pretty often. He ends up introducing like 40 characters and then going into like chapter 13 through 25, he completely switches gears where he doesn't follow any of those 40 characters and instead follows Rosie the nosy neighbor who's just a side character, just completely shifts it. And it's a lot more boring. Like, it really falls off after chapter 12, but, you know, it's it's hard not to appreciate the first fucking 12 chapters of this goddamn thing. It's unreal. So I really thought, you know, like, bribing the judge with more of this might just do the trick, but it didn't. Long story short, you might know him from Trapped in the Closet, and if you don't, 
You should. Realistically, I think most people remember his Ignition song. That was the one that was like the chart topper for him. That one was really popular. But I also remember him for a different song that wasn't quite as popular. It was an Ethiopia concert where he performed a song that tried to get women in the audience to come back to America with him, supposedly to join his sex cult. It's a really odd video that not a lot of people mention. You have your passport. Did you get your shots? Girl, would you like to come back with Rob to America? Do you have your passport? Did you get your shots? Who wants to come back with Rob to America? America? Fuck, I live in America, and I was about to buy plane tickets to come with Rob to America. It, it shit goes hard, you know? Like, how can you say no to that? I, I still can't believe this is real. No one really mentions this for some reason. It's so goofy and, and disturbing to just go on stage and try and, like, manipulate people into, like, wanting to go with you to, like, a allegedly, like, a sex cult thing. F fucking pretty blatant. Even made a whole song around it because the background band also even chimes in with some harmonies saying like, America, America. And like they're clearly in sync with the music so they practiced this, they rehearsed it, they knew this was going to be a song. Like, do you have your passports? Did you get your shots? You want to come back with me to America? Kind of weird, kind of silly. But uh, that, that, that has nothing to do with any of his charges, I don't think. I don't know if this is something he's being charged for. But overall... He just has a long history of being an absolute fucking villain. A long documented list of tons and tons of evidence to support the claims of a lot of victims of him, of a lot of victims of his. And really it's overdue that he goes to jail for these things. So that's great. Even if it comes at the cost of no more trapped in the closet, God damn it, it's a sacrifice we're going to have to make. And to be fair, R. Kelly could absolutely make more chapters of trapped in the closet while in prison because the beat is just a leaky faucet and then a couple of, like, drum hits, which you can just simulate on literally anything. Like, that that could work, and then just a leaky faucet noise. So really, this doesn't even have to be the end of Trapped in the Closet. Who knows? This could just be the beginning. It transitions into more closely related to his life, like Trapped in the, Trapped in the Cell, something like that, perhaps. But anyway, I think this is great news that he finally received a long sentence here for all of these crimes. Uh, I know this has been like an ongoing legal battle for quite some time, so I imagine this is a huge sigh of relief for all the victims to finally have justice served here with R. Kelly basically receiving a life sentence. He's 55 years old, so 30 years here. I mean, that's, that's probably going to do it. But yeah, anyway, that's about it. See ya.